Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Sunil Gupta. I welcome you all on behalf of Chemistry Department, IT Region. Today we have with us Professor Kalyan Sadhu. Professor Sadhu obtained his BSc with honors in chemistry and MSc in chemistry from Presidency College, Kolkata, affiliated with Calcutta University. He received his PhD from IIT Kanpur in 2009. After receiving his doctorate, he joined Osaka University, Japan for two years as a specially appointed assistant professor. After that, he joined University of Strasbourg in France for two years and then moved to University of Geneva in Switzerland for one year as a postdoctoral fellow. Since July 2014, he has been working as assistant professor at IITUC. The major focus of his current research is nanobio interfacial chemistry. His group is working on gold nanomaterials for biological applications such as imaging, recognition, and drug delivery. So now I invite Professor Sahu to deliver his lecture. The title of his talk is The Golden Chemistry at Nanobio Interfaces. So, Professor Sadhu, the mic is yours. Uh, I think I am audible. So, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Professor Puneet, for the introduction. And thank you, Professor Justin, for giving me the opportunity to speak our chemistry in this webinar series. So, the title of my Topic is the golden chemistry at nanobio interfaces. Before going to the discussion of technical discussion of my work, I would like to highlight that IIT Ruti has given me the opportunity to work totally in a different field compared to my previous research experience. And they allow me to explore in chemistry at IIT Ruti chemistry department. So this is a great honor for me uh, to do something in the recent in this topic of nano. So before just going to this uh, my research area, I would like to focus in a single slide what kind of chemistry I did with the bio uh, molecules before coming uh, here or before joining IIT. So I, I, I totally work on the molecular chemistry. So nanochemistry is, I have started during my uh, academic research, independent research area. So the target is one of my, our target is that detect EGFR protein. It is present in the cell membrane. So, and what we try to do, we try to develop an alternate detecting method compared to the GFP, that is green fluorescent protein, which is old, well known for the detection of the protein. So what is this protein? We use mutant version of the TL tag. So what it does, it can react with the beta-lactam ring. So we synthesize a beta-lactam derivative where one side it is attached with the fluorophore, another side it is attached with the quencher. Now, because uh, of the interaction with that mutant version of the beta lactamase, this ring opening takes place and the quencher removes from the system. So the fluorophore is now attached covalently to the mutant version of the beta lactamase. So this technique we used for the uh, target protein, detection of the target protein at the cell membrane. So you could Q 
you could see the fluorescence, green fluorescence in the cell membrane because of this. Now, other than this work, what we did, it is again a molecular chemistry, it is catalysis work. So, azide to amine reduction in presence of ruthenium catalyst and light. So, this reaction takes place and subsequently the fluorophore is released in the system. This technology we used for the detection of the nucleic acid and protein inside the cells. So, with this idea, uh, we are trying to develop something new at IIT Rookie. So, uh, during my postdoctoral stint, a parallel stream which was generating uh, is nanobio interfacial chemistry. So, this is the biological cells. If you see, this is the lipid bilayer and the proteins. This is around the cell membrane, you can think of. Now, this is the nanoparticle. What we used to work, we used to work on a small, small molecule, organic molecule or inorganic molecule, which directly interacts with this. However, in this case of nanoparticle, there is a interface between these two, which generally present in a ligands, which are stabilized the nanoparticle. So, in the last week, one of our colleagues, Professor Ravinda Pandey, discussed about the interface shell chemistry. So, we work on this interfacial aspect on that nanoparticle and the biomolecules. So, if you look at the biomolecules, these are the complicated biomolecules surrounded by the nanoparticle. And if there are two nanoparticles with the biomolecules, we can see different types of interaction. For example, Van der Waals interaction, electrostatic, electrostatic, osmotic depletion, solvation. So all these forces we need to keep in our mind. And there are some promotive forces. For example, specific binding of ligand receptor interaction, non-specific binding, free energy release at the contact site, so on. So these are the things we have to keep it in our mind while doing this nanobio research. So, in, the, in that same year, 2009, a JAX beta edition was published. So, JAX beta is a collection of few other JAX paper, which was published in 2008 and 9, based on chemistry at the nanobio interface. So, they mentioned that it is the breath and creative energy of this young field. So, around 2008 or 9, this nanobio interfacial chemistry has started evolving. And in 2014, a Chemical Society Review Journal was published where they have shown the application of in nanowire interfaces to mostly eight different broad categories. In our case, we focus on three different aspects, differentiation, signal sensing, and drug delivery. So, currently we are working on four different aspects. And these are superparticles for host gas chemistry, and nucleic acid and amino acid interactions, Alzheimer's disease. These three are related with that nanobio interface. And the fourth one, which is metal based reduction, is not our uh, today's topic. So I will not discuss about this one. So I will start with the presentation of the drug delivery discussion. Now, if we look at my title, there are two aspects. One is golden chemistry and nanobio interface. So I mentioned that my our motive that why we use that nanobio interface. Now, why gold chemistry? That this Angavante Shimi cover page itself suggests the reason for gold chemistry. So these all the shapes and uh, are possible from the gold nanomaterials. And interestingly, still. For example, if we consider simple gold nanorod, we can see the color from blue to red, just changing the aspect ratio, that is the width height ratio of the gold nanorod. Similarly, nano shape can give a variety of color, nano gauges as well. And all these are possible because of this SPR, that is surface plasma resonance of gold nanoparticle. So, 
if we look at the synthesis of the gold nanoparticle, it was first reported by Faraday almost 200 years ago. Now, this is one of the recent literature, which is also published about 50 years ago. And that is the citrate as a used as a reducing agent for the synthesis of gold nanoparticle. So they have shown that if you increase the citrate concentration, the diameter decreases. And for our purpose, we have chosen this sample A, that method. So all our, in our case, the gold nanoparticle diameter is around 16 nanometer. So in 2017, uh, this gold supersphere chemistry was published from Israel. So what they did, they took the secret stabilized gold nanoparticle, took the polyoxometallate, which replaces the citrate and this gold nanoparticle was developed. And then when they used the thiol derivative, they got this suprasphere. Now this suprasphere is nothing but the self arrangement, self assembly of this small gold nanoparticle. So as there is a self assembly, what happens? There are a lot of void space or cavity has been there. And this cavity helps in the post test chemistry with uh, different small molecules. So this idea we want to utilize in our case. So what we did, we instead of polyoxometallic, we are thinking of using the organic supramolecules. Now, if you look at the literature, there are plenty of organic supramolecules known, starting from crown with a cryptan, symbolotraction, rhodopsin, catenin, and so on, up to pilarine. Now, if for our initial studies, we have chosen uh, of this supramolecule, so cryptan and cucurbitril. So cryptan is a cage like molecule, and cucurbitril is a bangle like molecule. So these are the two molecules we have chosen. So, specifically these two cryptans. Now, if you look at the, these two cryptans, they are regioisomeric. Just look, focus on this part. This is the para derivative, whereas this is the meta derivative. So, these two are regioisomeric cryptans. Now, when we added these cryptans to the gold nanoparticle solution, initially they aggregate, and finally, gold suprasphere was obtained from cryptan 1. And elongated dodecahedron was obtained from Krypton 2. The shape was very clear at these images. So, this is for the gold supersphere, and this is for the elongated dodecahedron. The formation of the gold supersphere was also confirmed from the dynamic light scattering. So, addition of that uh, Krypton 1 showing that shift which suggests the formation of the suprasphere. And the suprasphere was further confirmed from the tain image. And this is for the elongated dodecahedron. Now we utilize the post case chemistry. So for our purpose, we have synthesized this particular molecule in our lab. And we check the host case chemistry. And we have seen that in aqueous medium, in a wide range of buffer, the uptake is very high. And then we check the release of these small molecules from the cavity of the suprasphere or elongated tetrahedron with the help of the organic molecules. And we were sufficiently shown this uptake and recovery process. Now we want to apply this in the biological system. So for that, our idea is to use this doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is nothing but a chemotherapeutic drug. This is one of the most well-known chemotherapeutic drug. What it does, it actually does the cell apoptosis in different cancer cells and different varieties of cancer. Now, if we talk to a doctor till today, the way to deliver the doxorubicin is the intravenous injection. So, there is no other option. Why? Because if you put the doxorubicin with the, as an oral drug, it releases in the stomach in general, and then from stomach, it does not go to the desired location. So what is our idea that if we use some drug carrier, which will allow the doxorubicin to pass the stomach and 
release the doxorubicin in the small intestine. So that the doxorubicin can be released and at small intestine and then do the necessary job. So for that purpose, we used cucurbitril. So this is the structure of the cucurbitril, what we have used. So this is gold nanoparticle, we use cucurbitril and then this self assemble nano start formation was obtained. Then the flower shaped geometry finally lead to the formation of the supra pyramid. If you look at the supra pyramid dimension, it is in the micrometer, whereas the gold nanoparticle is 16 nanometer. So you can think of huge void is or cavity is generated within this supra pyramid structure. So our idea is to use this supra pyramid as a host for doxorubicin. Now what we checked is that we have used different acids, nitric acid, HPR, sulfuric acid and HCl and in all the cases we obtained the supra pyramid. However, the size that if you look at the dimension, the volume is much less in the case of nitric, whereas in case of chloride it is very big. So, then we started the post case chemistry. Uh, so, before that, starting the host case chemistry, we have uh, checked that two phase supra pyramid used with doxorubicin for 24 hour checking. And what we have seen that structure remains intact with, after the treatment with the doxorubicin. However, when we wash the supra pyramids with water, we could see that the side walls of the suprapyramid is getting disrupted and this is almost after one hour of washing. So we thought that we could utilize this concept for the release of the doxorubicin from this uh, species and for that we have treated with glutathione at age 7.4 which is nothing but the mimicking condition of the small intestine. So what happens at this condition, this uh, pyramid structure totally collapsed and the drugs released from the uh, pyramid. Compared our uptake and release of doxorubicin with another two an anti-cancer drugs, so that is etoposide and prednisolone, all these drugs are used for uh, ELBCL type of cancer that is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. What happens in the case of sulfuric acid, HPR, and HCL? All these drug uptake were reasonably good. However, we check when we check the release experiment, we use this condition that this particular condition at 7.4 pH is nothing but the small intestine, pH 4.4 is the stomach um, pH. HSA is human serum albumin, which is the intravenous injection condition. So, among these three, it suggests that doxorubicin release is possible selectively in the small intestinal condition. Now, this doxorubicin can be present either in the suprapyramid cavity or even in the cavity of the cucurbitril, because cucurbitril is a bangle shape. Now that was set with the adamantan amine. So this adamantan amine is highly selective for cucurbitril. So when we, we use this adamantan amine, if something is present with the cucurbitril cavity, it will come out and uh, adamantan amine will take place uh, in the cucurbitril. However, our study suggests that the doxorubicin was uptake in the supra pyramid, not in the uh, cavity on the cucurbitril. Further, we checked the release experiment in the cell line. So we treated the D145 cell, that is human prostate cancer cell line, with our suprapyramid loaded with the doxorubicin. Within half an hour, the from that suprapyramid, the drug released and it enters inside the cell. We could see the drugs inside the cell. Now, with time, we could see the cell apoptosis process has started and the cells are dead because of the drugs acting. Now, I will move to our next project that is the nucleic acid and amino acid interaction. 
So as I mentioned that all the work with this nanobio thing has started around 2008 uh, onwards. So it is YU from University of Illinois. So they have used DNA sequences with adenine 30 sequence, cytosine 30 sequence, and thymine uh, 30 sequence, and shows that adenine and cytosine shows so nanoflower formation, whereas in case of thymine, it is nanosphere. These are obtained after the growth reaction of the gold nanoparticle. So, if we look at the sequences are very rare, very, very rare, the A13 sequence. So, our idea is to use that random sequence, or if we can get much more idea that which kind of sequence will work much better. So before going that, we have seen this paper as well. So this is from the same group. They use this nano prism and they use different types of sequences and they obtain different types of structure after the growth reaction. In 2018, this paper was published from South Korea. And this is one of the most important paper in the gold nanoparticle research. So why so? As I mentioned, that gold nanoparticle is, research is known for more than 50 years. However, this is the first time they can show the chiral plasmonic gold nanoparticle. So these are the chiral gold nanoparticle. If you look at this pictures carefully, the orientation in totally different way. And that has been confirmed from the uh, CD. Data. And another work where the peptoid chemistry was used for the formation of the coral shaped gold nanoparticles. So these are the study which we keep in our mind to check our chemistry. So for our chemistry, what we did, we have chosen two random sequences. It's not exactly random. The reason I will discuss later that why these particular two sequences. Now, if you look at the number of A, B, G, C are more or less same in these two sequences. And in both the cases, at the 5 dash end, it is modified with the amine. So, amine modified DNA sequences, 8 multi DNA sequences, we use. So, what happens when we perform the growth reaction? We have seen in the case of EMR. It gives purple color, whereas in the PML it is the red color, whereas no DNA or the gold nanoparticle itself was red color. Now, the absorbance study suggests that there is something different, and as the previous experience with the wild loose group, we were expecting some nanoflower formation in the case of PMR. Now, the question is whether it is nanoflower or not, we have checked via the uh, TM imaging, so PMR shows that nanoflower formation. Now the question is, ask that why this nanoflower formation is taking place. So what we did in this ACA sequence, we changed it to AAA, ATA, AGA sequence, and in, when we change it to ATA, then actually it stopped that nanoflower formation, whereas A and G shows the nanoflower formation. That suggests the or that is possible because of this binding affinity of the nucleic bases to the gold nanoparticle surface. Now we checked the amine modification at opposite end, that is in the three dash end of the same sequence. We checked with no modification and both modification. So it overall this study suggests that we really need five dash amine modification at the 5 dash end to have this gold nanoflower formation. This is in the case of both modification. Now, we did several mutations. So the initial mutations with the MMR and MML, where all the adenine is replaced with the thymine. In these cases, there is no nanoflower formation. These are spherical in nature. When we use these thymine sequences, we could see that this ACA sequence at the 5 dash 
in is exchangeable. In these cases, we will replace that ACA sequences with other. So this ACA sequence is re required to get the nanoflower formation. Moreover, we have checked with that three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and we have seen that eight mark this PMR is required for this because altogether the eight mark DNA has much more binding affinity compared to the three mark. Although this part is essential for the nanoflower, but nanoflower is not forming only with this sequence. So, the, why we have chosen these two sequences? The idea is to target this microRNA, which is present in the cancer cells. This is MIR21. So, if you look at the PMR sequence, this is complementary to this part. And PML is complementary to this part. So that is the reason we have chosen these two sequences. And when we treated this nanoflower as a seed and perform the growth reaction, we could see that we are distinction of the detection process of microRNA. Now we perform the amino acid based growth reaction. So when we do the amino acids, there are three different types of results we obtain. One, is non-aggregated. These are the amino acids which are responsible. Uh, in the case of aggregated, arginine, histidine, serine, phenylalanine, nitronine, and tryptophan are responsible. And some showed immediate precipitation, that is aspartic acid, glutamic acid, cysteine, and tyrosine. Now, our idea is to check more detail with that aggregated one. So these are the same for that non-aggregated and aggregated version. So one of this aggregated was with the methionine. So this is without the treatment of methionine and this is with methionine treatment. We got that coral shape geometry. Now we thought that how this coral shape is forming, we have checked. And what we have seen that just immediate addition of the methionine and perform the growth reaction. The overall size is remains same, but each of the individual particle size is much smaller. In this case, this and in the context of 10 minutes incubation, this is slightly bigger compared to this. This study is currently ongoing in our lab. That how does it operate? Now, what we did actually, we treated before the treatment of the amino acid, we treated that amine modified nucleic acid, so that PMR, which I mentioned earlier. So when we use that PMR, given that these amino acids, which shows the aggregated phenylalanine, serine, and tryptophan, now show the non-aggregated form, arginine shows nanoflower, and histidine and methionine shows the aggregated. This arginine is different and then we check in the literature, there is one interesting theoretical paper in nucleic acid research, which shows that there is a very strong hydrogen bonding between arginine and DNA. And because of that, we got this nanoflower. In order to check that whether really this is working or not, we have gone to the, another study. Before that, I will just show here that formation of the nanoflower with the arginine in this particular image. Now, what we did, we checked three different peptide sequences. So, this KKK is 16 amino acid sequence with three lysine, and this KKK shows three, three 10 alpha helical structure. And when this lysine is replaced with the arginine, it shows the, uh, this is 3 10 helical structure. Arginine, uh, that RRR is the alpha helical structure. And when there is one single replacement, that mutation with K by R, this KKR shows the formation of helical structure from the Tritian helical structure. So, what we did, we first treated with PMR and then the amino acids, uh, these uh, peptide sequences. So, in the case of KKK, we got this. Spherical geometry in the case of RRR, we got this nanoflower, and this is clearly different. You can see the difference, and this KKR also shows the nanoflower formation. So, uh, 
we could selectively detect a single mutation with our this hydrogen bonding concept of the arginine and DNA sequence. If you look at the mechanism, so gold nanoparticle when we treated with amine modified DNA, so this arrow means amine modified, right? So it uh, it is uh, present in this gold nanoparticle surface, and then we perform the growth reaction. We got the nanoflower, which we described earlier. Now, when we increase, use the amino acid, its concentration is high compared to the DNA sequence. It replaces the DNA from the surface. And when we perform the growth reaction, we got the spherical shape. In the case of arginine, what happens? There is a strong hydrogen bonding between the DNA and arginine. So it does not replace the DNA from the surface. And we got this nanoflower. So, this concept when we checked, uh, we have seen that high, other than hydrogen bonding, there is another important interaction is also present, which is van der Waal interaction between DNA and amino acid. And that was also reported in that same theoretical paper. So what we tried to do, we take this four amino acid, these all these four belongs to one particular group that is polar uncharged side chains. So serine, threonine, asparagine, and glutamine. And we use this NH2PR is nothing but the PMR sequence, the same PMR sequence. And this is MMR sequence where all the adenine has been replaced with the thymine. So what happens when we took the gold nanoparticle and this reaction, we just mentioned earlier, and we have seen that in the previous cases, also serine is aggregated first compared to threonine, aspartame, and glutamine. Now, if we keep these solutions for one day, it shows precipitation. And those which were non aggregated now spring aggregation within the 24 hours. So, this is the case where serine shows immediate aggregation and glutamine shows non aggregated species. Now, we, if we keep it time we should see that aggregation and if we monitor that aggregation order we could see that threonine and asparagine shows similar print glutamine is lower and serine is not mentioned serine is shows immediate aggregation now if we just go back to this that number of carbon atoms in the case of threonine and asparagine are same in case of serine, it is less and glutamine is highest. So we, we are thinking that the van der Waal interaction is actually playing a role because number of carbon atom is nothing but giving the idea of the van der Waal volume of this amino acid. Then what we did, we treated with the DNA sequence just like the previous work before prior to the treatment of the amino acid. So only serine. It shows immediate aggregation. When we use PMR, it did not show aggregation. When we use MMR, it started showing aggregation. In the case of asparagine, only asparagine shows aggregation. However, PMR, AMR both stops the aggregation process. In the case of asparagine, glutamine, and threonine. This was confirmed with the case of serine that MMR at two hours. There is no aggregation with time the aggregation has started forming. So, as I mentioned, that there are three different interactions: hydrogen bonding, van der Waals, and water mediated bond. So, we are looking at that what happens. So, what actually we have obtained that is whether it will be aggregated or non-aggregated, that totally depends upon the concentration of the DNA. So that means there is a threshold concentration of the DNA. If it is more than that, it will be non-aggregated. If it is less than that, it will be aggregated. Then we calculated this, not calculated, we examined these values, that threshold values. So if you look at this for different amino acids, it is different. And in the case of PMR and MMR, the, sequence, um, the results are different. So this is the MMR concentration by PMR concentration. So this is the result. Now, if you look at the PMR order, it is serine greater than glutamine, greater than asparagine, and greater than threonine. Whereas in case of MMR, this is the case. Now, in 
TMR, we have a lot of adenine, which is replaced with thymine in MMR. However, adenine and serine interaction, van der Waal interaction is very less or negative. So in this paper, what we have seen that van der Waal interaction, which is two-third contribution uh, in terms of interaction between the amino acid and DNA. The previous case with hydrogen bonding has only one-sixth contribution. So this is major contribution. If you look at the van der Waal contract, contacts threonine is greater than aspartame glutamine and serine if you look this order of the pmr it is just exactly opposite so our idea was working then what happens when we added a to t that adenine to timing modification the van der waals contact that in case of threonine it is more than serine and then glutamine and in case of asparagine a to T mutation is favors the van der Waal contact. So that is why if you look at as in all these three cases other than asparagine, the value is more than one, that is it is increasing in concentration of MMR is equal. Whereas in case of MMR, we need low concentration. Okay. So what we can summarize that threonine shows selective van der Waals contact with timing. And with respect to other nucleic bases, the concentration of MMR increases significantly in the case of theonine. So this is the correct raise. And in the case of MMR, that uh, concentration decreases for asparagine because they are disfavoring in general contracts. Now we move to our chemistry towards the old nano rod. So the Y loose group who has shown that nanoprism and nano spherical nano thing they use this nano rod for their purpose and they show different geometries with adenine 20 adenine 20 and these sequences so what we are thinking that what happens if we use gold nano rod hey, in our case so we started with the gold nano rod and we checked with amino acids and we have obtained two different types one is dumbbell structure, another is snowflake structure. So mostly it is snowflake structure, except the case of arginine, lysine, and histidine, which has positive charge on the amino acid. These three shows show the dumbbell structure. So this is the confirmation of that dumbbell structure obtaining after the growth reaction. And this is the case where the snowflake structure has been formed. Now we Dumbbell structure can be rationalized from that concept that it is positively charged. So, in the two positively charged nanorod or dumbbell structure do not want to come close. So, that is why they are separated. Now, what happens in this particular case? So, for this, we have chosen the methionine. So, we increases the methionine concentration, and we did, here we have used 30 minutes incubation time, but in this particular case, we did not uh, into long time. It is just after addition, we added this um, NH2H and gold. So what happens, we could see that the formation of gold, then the nanorod is coming on the surface. It's very clear that how this gold is forming in the snowflake structure. And when we increase the time, so this is at zero minute with 400 micromolar concentration. In this case, all are 400 micromolar, but the incubation time is different. And we could see easily that formation, how this snowflake structure has been formed. Now we utilize this knowledge for the peptide chemistry. So we use this RRR peptide, or arginine modified. So, and what we have seen that in case of EMR, we got the snowflake structure, and in case of this ar arginine modified uh, peptide, we got this C arginine suprastructure. So, this is the suprastructure C arginine like, and what we could see that there is this is STM images, so gold is there throughout the structure. If you look at the phosphorus that is coming from the DNA, 
So in this case, it is randomly oriented, whereas we could see a code with much force for us. That is possible because of that strong interaction between that arginine and DNA. So this is possible in this particular case, which showed in this C arginine structure. We are currently use, working on this C arginine structure for the chiral separation that we may discuss in our next presentation whenever we will get the result. There is another paper in 2017. What they have shown that depending upon the DNA nature, you could arrange the gold nanorod either by end-to-end -end assembly or side-on assembly. So this result actually uh, mot uh, motivate us to detect microRNA. So this is the microRNA, as I mentioned previously, MIA21. So these are the two sequences, PML and PMR. And we have that modification at the 5 dash end and the 3 dash end in the case of PMR. And what we have often that depending upon it, whether it is 5 dash end modification or 3 dash, if you look at this, this is the only difference in these two cases. In this case, this is 5 dash, and in this case, it is 3 dash modification. What happens in this case, we got an end to end. And in this case, we obtain the side on modification. So, end to end modification is confirmed from this. This, what you have actually seen like a thin membrane, is nothing but the several nano rods combined end to end fashion to give this. Whereas the side on fashion, you could see this way. Then we try to utilize this chemistry that 3 dash modification with a different concentration of the microRNA. So when the concentration of the microRNA is less, this nanorod means the chain length decreases. So this is the example with that concentration of microRNA. How does it change? And when the concentration of these two amino uh, nucleic acids are more, we got a chain, but with a much more thick. So this kind of chemistry we are trying to utilize in the cell for the detection of the microRNA inside the cell. So the last part of my presentation that is related to the Alzheimer's disease. If we look at the literature, these are the two peptide sequence, A beta 40 and 42, which is responsible for that Alzheimer because of that aggregation of these two peptides inside the brain. So this is the healthy brain and this is the Alzheimer brain where this aggregates and because of this plate formation that uh, this is the healthy neuron and this neuron is now business neuron and because of that people um, have this kind of problem anxiety sadness face and the paranoia so most importantly that loss of memory which is associated with the Alzheimer's disease now if we look at literature how people are trying to detect this plate formation so the most well-known molecule is thioclavin G. This is called as a gold standard molecule. How and the recently, not very in 2015, this particular heterocyclic molecule was developed, which shows photon emission with a little background signal. In 2015, the gold nanoparticle was used for the aggregation process, and very recently. In 2019, this particular molecule is shows better activity because it could solve the blood brain barrier so, for the detection. So th these are the molecules. I do not want to discuss much more detail of this. The one point which I want to highlight is that this molecule work at a micromolar concentration of the amyloid beta aggregated species. Now, in 2017, one paper published in ACS Chemical Neuroscience, where they mentioned that the target should be in the nanomolar concentration. So instead of micromolar concentration. So our idea is to do that, checking that my nanomolar concentration of amyloid beta species in the blood serum or in the CSF. Because if you want to detect the Alzheimer plague, uh, 
uh, inside the person that is only possible after his or her death. So there is no absolutely no method till today, and that is the reason that no drug is discovered with this Alzheimer yet. So our idea is to detect the Alzheimer from the patient blood serum or cerebrospinal fluid. So for that purpose, we use this concept. So this is the citrate stabilized gold nanoparticle. We use this fluorophore. So when there is, we treat the fluorophore, fluorophore directly comes in contact with the gold nanoparticle and fluorescence is changed. Now in presence of the amyloid beta monomer, which has a better affinity of the gold towards the gold nanoparticle surface, releases the fluorophore, and then the fluorescence intensity increases compared with this. Now, if we add copper ion, which actually facilitates the oligomerization of the monomer, releases more fluorophore in the solution, which can be checked in the stepwise fluorogenic manner. So, however, and moreover, this process is not selective for amyloid beta 40 or 42. So both can work at the, with this strategy. Now with that addition of the copper ion, we could see that fluorescence enhancement takes place. And this kinetics with different concentration of copper ion suggests the most uh, initial interaction with the amyloid beta monomer and copper takes place with 1 is to 1.5 interaction. And we have compared with different small organic fluorophore, and we have seen that a CSC2 that means this particular molecule is selective for this particular studies, whereas fluorescein methylene 2, thioflavin T, and CSC1 does not work because the competition between the fluorophore and the amyloid beta monomer is essential for this study. Finally, we applied this in the uh, with compared with the other aggregated peptides or protein that is alpha cyanidin or IAPT. So, uh, am I, this shows that uh, with the amyloid beta monomer, it shows better activity compared with this. And we finally applied this with the human serum albumin that is coming from the blood serum and the artificial CSF that is cerebrospinal fluid. To show that our mechanism works in these two conditions. So, in summary, we could say that we have shown that host based chemistry for the drug uptake and release, hydrogen bonding and Van der Waal interactions between the DNA and amino acids for the selective detection of the single mutations, and amyloid beta monomer at nanomolar concentration. Most importantly, this method is instantaneous. Within a minute, you can see the result. And finally, I would like to acknowledge my group members. It is only possible because of their hard work. Because as I mentioned in the beginning that I have changed my research topic and because of them, we could get the result. Today's work mostly done by Shavas and Minakshi. Minakshi is here in this photo. And I would like to acknowledge chemistry department, IIT Duty and IIC of IITR for the instrumentation and the official facilities. And our collaborator, Professor Parthurai for the cell imaging and Professor Karinal Baruddaj for providing the preprints. And of course, the funding agency, IIT Duty, SERP India, EST Nano Mission, PRNS, uh, CSIR, and Mitex MHIT. This is uh, Indo Canadian funding we have opened. And finally, thank you all for your presence. I welcome any kind of questions. Thank you for Professor Kalya for this insightful talk on biological applications of gold and materials. I'm sure that all of us got benefited uh, from this talk. Now the stage is open for questions. If 
Please feel free to ask questions and I, I will try to help you if you have any doubt or queries. I, I again encourage students to ask questions or if any, anyone else has any questions, please ask. If you have any, any question later on, you can always contact Professor Kalyana or email. So if there is any more questions, then uh, thank you once again, Professor Kalyana, for the very nice insight to talk. And uh, uh, I hand over my mic to our activity, Professor Jatin. Thank you. Thanks.